Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the updates that are all around in this thing here, the TBS Crossfire. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that the Team Black Sheet Crossfire stuff is something that I've got an entire series on. So if you're interested in finding out what Crossfire is, how it works, why it's different, uh, and the advantages of Crossfire over a traditional 2.4 gigahertz system, then go and have a look at those videos. But in this video, I'm kind of making this one as a bit of an update because going through all of the update process a couple of days ago to update this particular module here, just if you're interested what this is, this is actually the TBS Tango radio. Um, I'll be uh, doing a number of videos about the Crossfire in the upcoming couple of weeks, uh, mainly because if you look behind me, about there, uh, that is all the kit being put together for the next endurance build. That's going to be running 10 inch props. It's going to be designed to fly for kind of half an hour at a time. Now, because I'm flying for half an hour, I will want to go to the edge of legal range. And for that, I'm going to want crossfire and I'm going to want decent FPV video connections as well. So we're going to talk about that as there, but there's a TBS nano receiver that's going to go into that build. Last time I did anything with the Crossfire, the firmware was on 2.25 and it's now on 2.40. And as I did the update, I saw loads of things that have changed. So let me cover the main things that have changed and talk about that. Uh, thank you to the engineering team at TBS that kind of gave me a bit of background on some of this, but hopefully I'll abstract it to a level which relatively easy to understand what's changed. Because the way it works in the release notes, you just kind of have one line and you have to figure out what it actually all means. So let me jump onto a slide and let's actually talk about what's changed. So the first thing it's important to talk about is what hasn't changed, and that is the hardware. It appears that TBS over-engineered the hardware a little bit because it hasn't gone through any revision. So the TBS Crossfire, both the normal size and the mini size that goes on the back of radios in the JR bays, has not been revised or changed really at all. So if you have a Crossfire, it will run all the different firmware. It appears that TBS are unlocking and adding features and benefits through the firmware updates. And again, that's all easily doable through the application, the TBS agent that you can put on your computer. So that's not a particularly laborious process. They are pretty good with their backup warranty and support. So if you invest in one of these systems and you have a problem, then TBS will kind of sort it out. And I've heard of a couple of instances where Team Black Sheep have actually taken units that have been abused a little bit. Not that I'm saying that you should try and uh, get warranty returns on abused kit, but actually honored those and sorted them out and fixed them for people. So the warranty is similar to the kind of stuff you get from Fat Shark. So there is a benefit if you pay that extra little bit for a product like TBS or Fat Shark in that you do get a little bit more extra support. I'm sure there are instances where people can cite where they haven't had a great time with TBS, but if you raise a ticket, my experience has been is even if I don't tip them off, that it's me asking, I've had a good experience with it. First thing to change about in the firmware, uh, the way you normally update a receiver is you plug it in, you power it up, and then while the TBS Crossfire transmitter is in binding mode, then you press the little button on the receiver and that starts the update. Now that can cause a little bit of a problem if the receiver is hidden away inside the foam of a wing or a quad or whatever it is that you're particularly building. As of version 2.3 and later, once you're above 2.3 on both the transmitter and the receiver, any subsequent firmware updates that are needed onto the receiver will happen automatically. And that is a big deal because it means that I can now hide away things like nano receivers right in the heart of models where it makes sense to put the receiver and then not have to worry about trying to get to that little button to press to start the reflashing process when I update the firmware on the transmitter. There's been a lot of work changing how the LQ and the RSSI LQ values work. In the previous series that I did with Crossfire, I spent a lot of time talking about this, and I did mention that this was something that I was aware that TBS were working on. It appears that work is now done. 70% is low, 60% is critical. So you can use that very much in the same way as you would use a standard RSSI value. If you're monitoring the LQ status, then it will flick and decrease. If you go below 70%, it's probably time to come home. If you go below 60%, then you really need to bring your model back towards you. 
The way RSSI and LQ values work has changed a little bit as well. Now, if you cast your mind back, if you've watched the original Crossfire series, you'll know that there's actually a number of flight modes that are available. Now, these flight modes are all listed in the manual and they go from high bandwidth, low latency or high update rate to normal update rate or low update rate, depending on the RF conditions. Now, that is shorthand for the three flight modes. The flight modes are 0, 1 and 2 where 2 is the 150 hertz mode and mode 1 is the 50 hertz mode. So when you're very close in, it's updating at 150 hertz, very quick update rates, high signal strength, very, very high speed, low latency connection to the model. As you start to get further out, then it will fall back to the 50 hertz mode to preserve the quality of the link and still maintain a really good contact. And that's one of the ways that Crossfire makes sure that you maintain a good connection even as you fly longer distances away. So the way that RSSI LQ now works is kind of tied up to those different profiles. So rather than have lots of different numbers changing, what it'll do is show you the worst number for both RSSI and LQ, and it'll also take care of which mode you're in. So for that one, if you are getting to 30%, that's the critical level and you should head for home. So be aware of that. Now, interestingly, some of the other long range systems that are out there that the Crossfire is compared with doesn't have this ability to switch between the 150 hertz and the 50 hertz modes to preserve the link status. They're either one or the other. And it's kind of one of the cool things that Crossfire does that a lot of people haven't really spotted. That's a bit different from a lot of the other long range stuff that's kicking about. Other things that have changed uh, now are lockable to two watts power. That's a pilot request. You're almost certainly going to have to run that on an external battery unless you have a very nice radio. I think the TBS Tango that I'm holding now actually allows you to do that. Uh, I think it has a lot of power on that pin. It doesn't have any kind of limiting current technology inside as well. But for most radios for kind of two watts, pretty much going to be illegal, apart from if you're living in a place that has very lax laws for RF power limits, but you're going to have to use an external battery. Other massive improvements, which I'm very pleased about, is the S-Bus has improved as well. Now, there were problems historically with Crossfire and things like the Vector and also some of the DJI kit not working very well. And that was down to the S-Bus implementation um, not being exactly the same, despite S-Bus being a pretty established standard. And occasionally frames for S-Bus would be accepted into the flight controller and then rejected as incorrect. And the flight controller would behave as though the receiver has got a problem and kind of go into fail safe. That, I'm reliably informed, has been improved an awful lot, which is great because I would really love to use some of my Crossfire systems that I've got here with the vector stuff that I'm about to do. And it also now means that my mini drack that I wasn't sure what receiver I was going to put in there is going to be having a micro vector. And now with this, I'm going to also put a little TBS receiver in there so I can have that Crossfire connection when I'm flying my mini drack too. GPS detail added to telemetry. There's been lots of stuff in it already, uh, but it now has a fully populated list and there's also other things too. So I just wanted to make this video. Hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are Crossfire pilots. I know lots of people don't bother updating their Crossfire because it kind of works and it's good, but there are quite a few cool things in here that has changed. The auto update, uh, the unlockable power level, the easier way to use both LQ and RSSI LQ to monitor your signal strength. And then the other big one for me is the fact that the S-Bus stuff has been improved a lot. So it's going to work with things like the Vector that I'm a big fan of. So again, if you have any more questions about any of the updates or changes that happens with the Crossfire stuff, then do let me know. And if I get enough of them together, I'll try and make another little supplementary update video where I answer those questions and pull them all together in one simple to use place. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists. So if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist and they all are organized in there to make them easier to use. 
If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Payments 360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.